Hey listeners, it's Paul Andriola here. Why not join our community at Small Cap Discoveries where we offer our members direct access to some of the best microcap investment opportunities available. Our members are getting access to premium microcap financings, research reports, and direct access to management. Sign up today at www.smallcapdiscoveries.com. Hi everyone, welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have back the CEO, Dr. Pilo Sensed from GBLT Corp to give us an update on the company. Uh, GBLT trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GBLT, and it also trades on the OTC under GBLTF. The company is currently trading at $0.09 cents with about 114 million shares outstanding or about a $10 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Hey, thanks a lot, Trevor. Um, yes, Dr. Sense, uh, great to have you back. It's been uh, roughly a year since we last spoke. Uh, you know, lots has happened over the last year. Um, and certainly I've, I've noticed that your company's been extremely busy over that last uh, last while. Uh, so happy to have you back. Happy to have you um, sort of tell us about the updates. Before we jump into many of the updates, why don't we uh, remind everybody what uh, GBLT is all about and you know, certainly your, your presentation here, I think uh, I'll hand it over to you and we can, we can start where we'd like. Yeah, Paul, uh, Trevor, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, as you said, um, I had a pretty, I had a nice chance last year, uh, one year ago to make a presentation, but in this one year, many things happened. We been all innovative, we added new business fields. And so, yeah, I am uh, allow myself then to give us the latest presentation. Many things you probably know from last year, but there have been some nice, uh, significant uh, positive changes in the last year, which I show in the presentation as well. So some things, so now it's just a technical issue. Okay, here we are. So uh, some things has not changed. We've been founded in 2003. We've been listed on the TSX uh, V now since 2018. Um, we increased our global mobile renewable energy uh, uh, programs and products. So we are a global mobile renewable energy organization with a wide and robust global distribution network and top tier partners, especially the globalization is one of our big projects for the future. We are working in three segments. We're having the segments mobile energy and batteries, personal healthcare and products. And uh, we started last year with solar panel cells, installations and maintenance. Uh, the 2023 numbers are not finished yet, so I'm not allowed to go in, in, in detail, but we are pretty happy with uh, with the year 20, uh, 2022. Uh, we have a nice significant growth in turnover. We have a nice significant growth in EBITDA. So uh, we can say we are a growing healthy company and we having a huge growth potential in all three segments. So as you see, and as you know from last year, our main customers for our basic business are the, the top big retailers globally, like Bauhaus, a DIY chain in Germany, Prisma, a biggest supermarket chain in Finland, Lidl, the second or third biggest retailer in the world, and so on and so on. Uh, one of our segments, as mentioned, is the mobile energy and battery market. Um, one of the drivers of the last years, and especially a driver for, for, for the upcoming years, are the, uh, um, uh, the mobile, uh, mobile storage systems. I presented them last year already. Uh, they are the alternative to merged and gasoline generators. Uh, in these days, it's getting more and more important that they're having zero emissions pollutions. Um, they are important for outdoor activities, disaster recoveries. They can charge mobile stations and now you can use them for construction. These products has not changed. Uh, the biggest difference is, of course, that the market is now much more sensitive with that. Uh, the lithium powered uh, projects are not just clean and um, so that they can uh, serve both residential and commercial needs. Um, but now in these days of energy crisis, they are more and more used as a backup plan. Um, I tell you, frankly, we saw it, um, as you know, we're having here crisis in Europe, a war in Ukraine. It's a nice product now for army and for NGOs. Um, so it's, it's the market is growing uh, tremendously. And as mentioned, even now in Europe, we are looking for power failures in many ways so that many people want to have this as a safety catch, even if they just have a small apartment. So this is definitely a product which we are pushing more and more and where we see a wide space in the upcoming, the upcoming years. 
Uh, these uh, these uh, mobile storage systems are kind of crown of our energy activities. As you know, historically, we started with normal alkaline batteries. Uh, again, we're using, as you know, Aqua Photo as a, as a global brand. And in 2022, we increased our activities massively in globalization of the Aqua Photo brand. Um, the market is still growing. Um, again, the energy crisis uh, increased the activities for the batteries as well. And uh, with Aqua Photo, we have a nice global brand. And beside this, as you know from the past, um, we are uh, having still our private label best battery business for uh, for various distribution channels. Uh, we're offering the whole range for disposable and rechargeable consumable batteries. And uh, so these are the things that Aqua Photo is mainly our front runner for our global activities. And private label is mainly our front row, our front row for the big retailers here in Europe. The, the the differentiation between brand and private label is pretty easy. Private label, with private label, we can penetrate larger distributors. It gives us a nice entrance level. It gives us a nice, uh, it gives us the vendor numbers. It gives us, it gives us a listing for our other products. Um, it's a nice volume. It's a growing volume right now. Um, and the same is with the, with branded products with the Aqua Photo. We have a kind of uh, uh, brand awareness uh, with the partnership with higher margins. And in these days right now here in Europe, I don't know how it's in, in Canada or North America, but right now there is a war, and you cannot say a different word than war, uh, between the uh, the brand leaders in Europe and the big retailers. And right now many brands being listed out from the big supermarket chains, discount chains, and so on. And this keeps gives us more and more space for our private label uh, products and for our alternative brand. So the the actual situation uh, caused by the inflation, by the up, by the increasing prices, gives us more and more space. So even as this battery business probably doesn't sound too sexy, it's still a nice driver for the future, and it's still a big growing market for us. Um, here you see how we position ourselves with Aqua Photo. We have a high quality for a fair price, and this is exactly the point where we can benefit from the actual crisis between the big brands and the big retailers. Here you see some highlights that's happened in the last year. You see there that there, one of our focus was definitely uh, the globalization. So for example, we now have uh, new new customers, big drugstores chains here in Europe. So we uh, expand our activities with the distribution system in Middle East. In East Africa, uh, we just opened a brand new office in the UK to expand, to, to increase our UK uh, presence. And uh, we, uh, we, we signed brand new deals for the Nordic and the Scandinavian countries as well. Uh, with nice significant turnover, so this is definitely one of the one of the avenues we want to continue for the for the next years, uh, putting and putting more time and investments in globalization. The second product line we are talking about um, is the healthcare product family. Um, healthcare had nothing to do with Corona, or Corona was of course a kind of starting phase for us, but in general, healthcare is one of the big growing markets in the world. The, Population is getting older and older. Uh, the people are getting more and more sensitive for uh, for uh, diseases. Um, our health system is um, is nearly bankruptcy here in Europe. So there's a big demand right now for curing yourself or for taking care of yourself more and more instead of going to the doctor. And in general, of course, we have an increased health awareness. Uh, we focused in mainly and very late, like significant turnover and significant growth. We mean we mainly have focus on the consumer electronics on the healthcare electronics part, naturally because these products are running with batteries. So when we talk about fever thermometers, blood pressure monitors, nebulizers, they're all running with batteries. So it was a perfect match between our battery business and entering the healthcare market. Um, we really signed uh, great, great uh, new contracts with major partners. Uh, we having top quality, so we can really offer German quality for an affordable price. And um, we noticed that, especially in this part, we have a kind of fragmented market. There be not too many brands, and we just had brands which are extremely expensive, which are now in the times of inflation really losing market share, and um, cheap, really cheap, uh, not well-known Chinese brands. And with our Dr. Zen's brand, we really cover the perfect middle space which especially in this crisis times is, uh, is a high value for us and for our clients. Uh, 
on the upcoming months, one of our focus is then to add to the healthcare product, to the electronic healthcare products, some consumables. Um, and that come later to one of the key products. Here you see nothing to do with Corona, uh, the global medical therometer market size, how expected to grow massively. The global drug pressure monitor market size will grow massively. The nebulizers are uh, growing massively. And I think these numbers are even underestimated. You're seeing right now here in Germany just started a few months ago and in Europe kind of post Corona time. That means we have a lot of main functions of lung and so on. And especially nebulizers are one of the, for my, for my feeling, one of the most underestimated products for the future. Uh, talking about consumables, combining consumer electronic health care with, uh, with uh, health care consumables, we verified uh, as one of our top priorities for the upcoming years, the CBD market. North America and Canada, North America, uh, CBD is, is, is legalized, it's pretty much well known. In Europe and, and in, in the European countries, it's just at the beginning. It's illegal in many countries still, it uh, starts to opening, and we see a significant growth uh, uh, possibility in the segment. So the European market is expected to increase 10 times in the upcoming years. Uh, we're having differences. Of course, United Kingdom is already a little more advanced than Germany. Um, just the German market is around uh, 10, just 10 percent of the German market would be already 150 million turnover. Um, so I see right now in Germany that we're having, or in Europe, that we're having more and more deregulation. And so we expect, to our knowledge and what we hear from the politician, that this would be one of the fastest growing markets for the CBD market globally. Uh, we are focusing right now on the oil, which covers 50% of the total CBD market products, but we have access to all kinds of CBD products as well. And um, we, with our product, we giving our clients, the big pharmacies, the big drugstore chains, um, the possibility to, 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 to leave the niche. Right now, the few CBD products you see on the markets are mainly uh, online products from, I don't know, unknown small companies, laboratories around the corner. And we are putting this product range now on the shelf space of the big retailers. For this, we're having a great uh, product. We have an penetrant extraction process, so our products are pretty unique. So we're having really a pure high quality CBD. Uh, we are one of the few companies who are offering multi flavors to this product. We're having um, overall the German quality made in Germany, European certificate products. But the, our biggest selling point is right now that we are right now the only one who offers these products to the big retailers, to the big chains, where we are already listed, where we are already having vendor lists. And in these days, uh, I told this last year already again, I uh, said again, is that um, no big distribution chain just open a vendor or a listing for just one product. But while we're having a wide Dr. Zenz range, we, we don't have to ask for new vendors or for new listings for just one product. So we're having a natural advantage compared with a small competition around. So we're pretty, pretty optimistic to have this as a great uh, uh, growing consumable for, for the shelf for the shell of the big retailers here in Europe. Um, here you see some of the highlights uh, when it comes about Dr. Zenz, when it comes about healthcare. Of course, we stabilized our business here in Europe with the biggest, with the biggest retailers we here we're having here in Europe. But you see already some of our expansions, global expansions, um, and uh, with, with significant nice, nice volume, and we're getting daily, daily, daily new contracts, new partners for all this kind of different products because this Dr. Zen's healthcare brand gives us a lot of space for for new and innovative products. And in these days of inflation and, and crisis, it's definitely easier to have a, when you have a nice network already to put more products in your existing network than looking for new ones. So this is, this is really a great opportunity for us that we don't have to look for new net, that we don't have to look for new customers like many competitors or, or startups. We having a great network already. We having great vendor numbers. We having great customers worldwide. And we are now in the position to put more and more products in these existing distribution channels. And here you see some of the highlights of, uh, of the last months. The biggest, the biggest new thing, and of course something uh, which is which is the biggest change in our 
or not big shift, it's the biggest extra point in our in our product line is the, the solar. We started January last year, we bought a solar company here in Germany. Um, and uh, honestly spoken, it was like, it's like a positive coincidence that there was then the war because uh, the solar energy part was already sensitive, big growing business in Germany. But of course, right now, uh, as everybody knows, we are uh, we are relying on the gas of, of Russia right now here in Europe. And due to the war, our government is now, and the European governments are really now massively, massively forcing, forcing the people to get rid of the fossil energy. Um, and now the law really requires installation of solar panels to power commercial and residential buildings. This includes retrofitting and older buildings. Um, we have the plan to have 80% of the of the energy in Germany have to be by renewable energy sources in the, the next eight years. Uh, Germany is doing the new the pretty unique, stupid way to leave uh, nuclear power plants. We have we, we closed nuclear power plants, we closed coal, coals, we closed all fast fossils. Um, so the people are really right now forced to look for non-fossil energy. Um, so the solar panels are the only opportunity right now for 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 private consumers and even mainly for the most of the industry to participate on non fossil energy because biomass or, or windmills is nothing you can you can use in your backyard. So yeah, the three hundred percent increase in solar installations and solar panels capacities uh, is uh, is the minimum we expect is much much more. Um, so the global reliance on oil continues to wane as the world seeks out new energy sources. And when we talk about new energy sources, uh, it's mainly uh, solar. Um, our core business in the past and where we now started with is the renewable energy for households. Um, we are one of the one of a few full service solution provider in Germany. So we're making not just the installation. We're making the engineering as well, so we are able to make uh, tailor-made solutions. Um, we will start in the second uh, quarter of this year, probably at the mid of this year, we will start to um, to have our own solar panels to start with our extra world brand, which gives us a nice extra uh, margin for our installations. And additionally, we're having some, some customers who will use our panels as well. And... Uh, Right now, and when it comes about the household systems, at the, at the stage where we're right now, we are at full capacity. So um, the idea for the future is to add our possibilities, to add uh, new teams, to open new branches. Right now, we are at 100 percentage, uh, but we are going on to implement it, implementing stra uh, strategies to further scale and the business. In this business right now, it's just about the capacities you are able to build up. The demand is, is unlimited. It's, there's no... There's no leakage demand for the upcoming years, especially when you see that right now uh, the government forces us in many ways to to go to electronic vehicles. Uh, right now we're having a new uh, proposal for the next year that even fossil heating systems are not allowed anymore. So that you re when you replace your oil or your gas or your gas uh, heater, you have to change the heat pumps. And no matter what our government is forcing us to change, going back from, from, from to, to non-fossil energy, everything is running with electricity. So if, if you have to change to a heat, heating pump, if you have to change to an electron vehicle, that all runs via energy, via, via electricity. And then again, we're coming to the point that um, you have no nuclear power plants anymore, no coal anymore. So this the solar energy is right now the only solution to 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 yeah to survive, um, and uh, this and, and parallel to this because uh, the demand for electricity is getting bigger and bigger. We already having the biggest the highest uh, electricity uh, cost in the world. I think right now we are six times higher than the United States, and we expect that it even goes goes up in the upcoming years. So there is no alternative for for solar uh, if you want to have energy and uh, and a warm room. Uh, the other part we are talking about is uh, commercial. Uh, we have a kind of a case study here. Uh, you know, the the, the, the the industry in Germany has to buy certificates uh, to for their production. And the price of the certi certificates is depending on their pollution. And they can reduce their pollution rate if they're installing solar. 
So it doesn't has to do has doesn't has doesn't have anything to do with their production. But if they, for example, using their car parking space to put solar installations on their car park, their overall balance sheet looks much better, and they're saving massively costs when it comes about buying certificates. So we are now starting more and more now to to work with and with the industry. Uh, one of our role model uh, clients at the first are the Senke, one of the biggest multi national organizations here in Germany. I think they're having just in Europe 36 factories. Um, and we are making their solar powered parking spots. Uh, we supply the battery technology to store the energy uh, generated from the parking store spots. And this is what I said when we have, and I said that we have uh, an engineer's capacities. These, these companies use, uh, needing uh, tailor made solutions that cannot go to normal crafts when they need specialized. And these are specialists, and these are the services we can offer to them as well. Where we have a pretty unique selling point. I think there are just maybe four or five companies with our knowledge and uh, engineering knowledge in this uh, in the solar industry. So we are having a pretty good spot there. Um, Henkel, for example, as an industrial company, they want to 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 change to convert 100% to renewable energy. Uh, they are now targeting 2034. And so they are forced to uh, to to take as much solar panels wherever they have some space. And here you see some some highlights when it comes about our renewable energy solar. Of course, as I, as I mentioned, it's brand new to us. We are just at the beginning to build this up. Uh, we, as I said, our our order books are full. Uh, we start with uh, with this, our own solar uh, solar panels at the mid of the year. And now our number one goal is right now to increase our, our teams, our branches, um, that uh, the orders are not for, that we don't uh, need one year to fill out all the orders. We are now working to increase our, our craftsman teams that we maybe can do the orders in, in three, four months, that we can start our sales activities right now. Right now, for example, we're doing zero sales activities because, uh, yeah, as I said, we are overloaded right now, but uh, we are going to change this and adjust this step by step. But as mentioned, we just took over this company. And of course, Rome wasn't built in a day. And of course, it, uh, it takes it takes a while, but it's a really, really prospective uh, and, and really a big growing market for us in the upcoming years. Here you see some of our turnovers. As mentioned, we are, we are growing uh, uh, massively. We had... Uh, Increased our turnover in the, in the first three quarters from 23 million euros to 31, 32 million euros in, uh, in, in this year or in 2022. Um, our margin, of course, is not increased in the same way, simple to the fact that we still had this logistic issues. And of course, that we are now step by step uh, having, having more and more new uh, high margin products, which we're just, as I showed you, starting to develop. Uh, we increased our EBITDA and we increased our uh, net income. In general, we are we are we are nicely profitable. Uh, we grow and turn over. We grow in cross profit. Um, keep in mind when you see the statistic, a special gross profit. We have differences in the quarter, so you cannot you cannot say it's always a straight line within the year. Even the years we having uh, we having uh, differences. Uh, for example, in, in in winter we don't have anybody on the roof for investing in solar. Um, the, the batteries are going strong in winter and in summer it's more uh, some outdoor products. So it's, uh, when, but when we look at quarter by quarter, we always, in, in 2022, we've been always ahead of 2021. Um, here you see some, some, some nice reference uh, when it comes about the valuation of our business. Um, the first is uh, Sunrun. As I said, when you want to participate on the solar market, you uh, just can manufacture products, but the panels and the storage systems are all made in China right now. There is no Western uh, manufacturer, which is significant market share. The other thing is you can invest in financing, but we're seeing right now installation gives you the widest possibilities. And Sunrun, for example, is a nationwide American uh, installation, solar installation company who acquired one of their competitors last year, uh, Vivid Solar. They vivid so that at this time 341 million in turnover, and I guess 120 million in losses. And even these days, they paid 10 times the uh, the, the turnover. Uh, Oakley, Weinstein Medical, they are competitors here, new competitor for us in Europe um, when it comes about healthcare. But they are a nice role model. 
uh, they've been sold. Uh, they've been sold with 127 million revenue uh, at the purchasing price of 280 million. But to give you an idea, they're making 23 million in EBIT. Uh, so you see what possibilities we have left in the healthcare, which we are just started two years ago, which we, which is one of our top priorities for the future. And as I said, even in the in the battery business, we had a significant change the last years. We had some takeovers, um, which are good for us. Because with this takeovers, more and more competition is leaving the market because uh, these big companies then closing some local or some regional brands, which gives us more space for our aqua photo. The team since last year that have, has not changed. It's me as a CEO. It's my COO, Sven. It's Kyle, uh, based in Toronto. And it's our uh, sales director, Peter, which is now with us for two years. Um, the capitalization is... It's, it's, it's not too pleasant, honestly spoken. We're having 130 million shares outstanding. We're having some options and still the inside ownership, 63 percentage, which is still mainly in the hands of my family. Yeah, and uh, this is in a, in a quick run, uh, our company. And of course, I'm more than pleased to answer your questions now. Paul? Well, thank, thank you, Dr. Sens. Um, uh, one, one question that comes to mind automatically, we've seen so much volatility in, in currencies and, you know, all sorts of geopolitics. Um, you know, speaking of currency, how do you guys manage currency? Because I imagine your, your product is probably coming from a number of different places and you're selling it to a number of different jurisdictions. What do you do to handle that? Yeah, I mean the, the 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 key thing is right. We are we are not a we are not a currency gambler. So at the beginning of the year, we always block the currency. We secure the currency on a fixed rate, and we make the calculation based on that. Um, of course, this gives us this 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 is of course not always positive for us when in way when the currency is to, in our favor. But we don't want to take any risk. We make our profit with the product, not with the currency on the product. So to answer your question, in Europe we we block uh, we block and we secure at the beginning of the year the currency for most of our European customers. And then the other hand, as I mentioned, uh, we are really forcing the globalization. So that means my ultimate goal is to make fifty percent of my turnover in US dollars and fifty percent of my turnover in euro. So that this is always balanced. So every every profit I lose on the every profit I do with euro or every loss I do with dollars will be then covered 50-50. Mm -hmm. So we're going two ways. We increase our global uh, global activities to having more customers on the dollar base. And parallel to this, we, we are blocking our funds at the, at the beginning of the year. Uh, we're blocking the currency to a fixed rate. And this is then the basic calculation for our annual talks with the customers. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back to the solar part of your business, you mentioned that you guys, uh, you're, you're sort of booked out to capacity. What, what level of revenue is capacity um, currently? Yeah, it's as I said, it's we, we we just bought a small company for a really low low margin at the beginning of last year to to dip our feet into to dip the toe into the in the water a little bit, uh, and of course due to the war, it, this was like a bomb. I mean, uh, it's uh, we we had no really time to structure all the things. So we love we will start really on a low scale. We're talking about two two point five million uh, euros uh, at the beginning. Um, we will think about five, six million in, in 2023, uh, but we see this as a 20 to 40 million uh, euro business easily in the upcoming years. Um, it's an easy calculation. You can talk, you can say that around one team can make around two million a year from the mm -hmm. part from the installations. So um, as fast you are, can building up more and more teams, as fast you can grow. Uh, and, but this is just the, the 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 calculation we have when it comes about private private households. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we can add a significant grow uh, with the, with the commercial part. So the the budgets right now, just for one industrial company or for the industrial companies we are talking with, are between three and six million for each customer for each uh, for each partner. So the limit in this is right now just caused by by the limits we're having in crafts and building up the infrastructure. But to answer your question, it's around two million in, in, in last year. It will be around four to six million in this year, and it could go up to 10, 50 in the, in the upcoming year, depending how fast we are able to follow the structure. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we are profitable. 
But of course, uh, all the growth we, we, we prognose and all the plans we have, we can finance by our own. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we are then uh, where they have a restriction for our liquidity, liquidity. We cannot now invest in 15 teams at one time, mm -hmm. building up the stock for, for 50 million at one time. This costs a lot of money. So our plan right now is, uh, is a self-growing, self-sustained uh, uh, process to, to, to increase so that we're going in this uh, smaller steps. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you, you've launched so many different products and so many different verticals. Uh, are there any newer verticals that you want to you want to look to get into? Um, when we talk about verticals, I mean, the solar thing, uh, we explained the situation that with the, with the importing, this is a brand new thing right now. We, we increase our vertical activity by starting with our own solar panel uh, import. So we, we reach the level of a kind of manufacturer. We found a tier one. Uh, manufacturer in Asia who are giving us on our own brand the uh, our own brand uh, the panels. This will increase our margin internally with 18 extra percentage and of course uh, gives us a kind of unique situation. To my knowledge, we are then the only installation company with this uh, with, with, with their own brand. Um, when it comes about when it comes about uh, the other segments, one part which is important for us when it comes about uh, vertical growth, is um, which is not part of the presentation, but as we are right now mainly just an offline company. That means we're trying to get our products in the shelf space of the of the big retailers, and we are pretty happy with and successful. But for this year and for the upcoming years, uh, increasing our online activities is, mm -hmm. is one of our massive goals. And then, of course, we're having the sales in our own hand as well. Um, we are now having the first brand new Amazon shops, uh, which are pretty successful here in Germany. We now try to adapt this uh, internationally, especially in Europe. And uh, we just launched a new Aqua photo page. We will start with our own online shops. We sign new deals with big um, internet platforms. So uh, leaving the traditional, not, not leaving, adding to the traditional offline activities, entering the online market. I know we are late, but, mm -hmm. but we know that we have a lot of space there and a lot of added value for us, especially of course, when it comes to margin. So uh, that uh, the online activities are definitely one thing we are we are forcing as well, and um, the other thing is that um, especially when it comes about uh, the CBD and the new products, uh, we are really close right now with 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 uh, uh, how how to explain right now if you have an, when you have a CBD product most of our competition are buying it from some wholesalers and and of course then the margins are pretty low. Due to our network, and you know, we are Canada-based, we having even contacts to the farmers, to the farmer. So even there, we are, we are, I think, in the best position right now to really cover all price points the market is demanding and to setting new price points, because we really start from the scratch and the point that we can even have contacts to the farmers. So not like our competition, we are not relying on wholesalers who are number five in the, in the vertical line when it comes to the product, when they come to the retailers. We are directly in touch with the with the, with the ground, and uh, so this gives us, of course, a lot of space for for growing the segment segment and dictating and or the prices or running the prices in the market. Mm -hmm. Now, Doctor Sense, um, so many so many different uh, products and services right now. What what can what what are you the most excited about, or what what do you expect the most uh, to come from? I think I think of course the the the, the no brainer is the solar business. The solar mm -hmm. business is something where we don't have to look for customers. The customers coming to us, so the challenges are different. And so when it comes purely about the easy way to make a lot of uh, growth and uh, and high margin growth, is the solar business. So this is really just relying strategically how fast we can build up the teams, how fast we can open new branches. As I said, no, no, no there's no demand gap or no demand problem. Um, this is a totally separate, unique business right now. When it comes about the other products, I think, as mentioned, that the healthcare segment is growing. We see this here in Germany, the people are getting older and older. The, the, uh, the, I can just repeat what I said there. I think uh, the healthcare segment will definitely be one of our drivers for the future. And I think especially in this segment, uh, it, it will be the, the CBD because we are just at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just see this in Canada and North America when, uh, when, when the when the cannabis and so on being legal uh, legalized, uh, being increased ten times the turnover of the CBD, because it's leaving the niche of these 
dirty, needy, uh, I don't know, uh, forbidden stuff. So this is right now the mentality here in, in Europe. It's forbidden, it's drugs, it's, it drives you nuts. And we see this is massively changing and we see zero competition in this right now to, to put this on a new level. So I think even if it's just at the starting, I'm really excited about this category as well. Mm. Now, you have so many different products from so many different areas. Um, and, and you know, over the last years, we've heard so much about logistics and supply chain issues. Um, what, what can you tell us about what you're seeing as far as supply chain issues? Yeah, this is this is uh, first of all the logistic is coming it's, it's, it's coming down i mean the prices for the containers um has had gone down we are nearly on the level before corona so the the the, the big issues we had in 2021 and starting 2022 with the uh, 16 18 thousand dollars for a 40 feet container they are back to three four thousand dollars so are they are nearly back to normal when it comes about logistic when it comes to supply chain this is exactly the point why we are now adding some products i mean keep in mind at the end of the day we're just having three product types mobile as energy mobile energy healthcare and solar i mean with each group we have a lot of products but at the end of the day it's just in marks three groups mm -hmm. and when it comes about supply chain we are forcing more and more we, we try more and more to have a international supply chain um, we rely in many ways on asia we're feeling comfortable with asia because we're having long long-term partnerships to huge factories who are supporting us tremendously and who are making the products for A brands, which, you, which you're all aware of as well, and you're getting a top quality for a top price. But especially the CBD, for example, made in Germany or made in Europe, this is, is, this is one of my high interests as well, because there we are getting our supply chain from Europe, where we don't have this logistic infrastructure problems. So logistic and supply chain is getting, was getting easier in 2022. We are happy with that. We don't have any issues anymore. We don't have any problems anymore. But parallel to those, to that, we are looking more and more to to build up um, our own um, assembly here in Europe, or to having more European partners uh, who are doing the products together with us. So we try to balance this out a little bit. But the situation generally is not comparable to 2021 or 2022. It's it's mm -hmm. much easier on us right now. Good, 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 good. Um, what what other challenges are are you facing as a business right now that that we we should know about? Well, I mean, top challenges. Um, I mean, we talked about this before. Um, the mood right now is 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 not really the best right now. I mean, uh, overall, we have the inflation, we have the crisis, um, so we are fighting with the overall mood like everybody else. But at the other end, it gives opportunities for us, as mentioned. Uh, the big brands, the Mars, the Nestles of the world right now are in massive, uh, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, they're in massive fights. Um, no, it's, it sounds odd, but we are a little bit the, the winner of this crisis then because the brand, the big retailers are looking for alternative brands or to increase their private label activities. And when they're looking for alternative brands or when they want to increase their private label activities, they're naturally coming to us, so that's good. The, the crisis, which is not good for, 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 every, uh, for every client um, in, 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 in gasoline and energy is good for us as well. I mean, the return of investment rate for solar installation was a few years ago, 10 to 15 years. So most of the people <clears throat> been hesitating to do that. Now the return of investment rate is one second. I mean, every interest rate, uh, even in these days, is, is cheaper to, to, to finance something like a PV installation than paying the high energy costs. So the challenge is that we are, of course, um, fighting with the, with the circumstances when it comes about the war, when it comes about mad mood, uh, about the mood of the people. But in general, right now, honestly spoken, as, as, as odd as it sounds, it gives us more possibilities. Um, and the other thing is, of course, that uh, each customer of us, due to this mode, is hesitating a little bit when it comes about their, their forecast for the future. But what we notice is right now that they are um, always pessimistic at the beginning when it comes about uh, the full year prognosis. But during the year, due to the problems we they're facing with the brands, as mentioned, they are picking up step by step. So the challenge is we don't have this uh, this one year forecast anymore that we can that we can guarantee in uh, March 2022 what turnover we're having in March 2023 because the people are hesitating. But we're seeing then the upcoming months, step by step by step, they're coming back to where they've been and, and growing. 
Uh, but of course, it's a little bit challenging when it comes about our supply chain, our logistics, just from our standard uh, procedures. Uh, so, so I would say this is right now the biggest challenge in Mark's challenge we are facing. Um, and oh, but overall, I think we are in a pretty good position uh, for this. And keep in mind, all products categories we are in are really, um, uh, uh, they, are, they are still really growing. I mean, they are, they are, they are they take the benefits of the crisis we are in. Um, and uh, so we feel pretty comfortable with it this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do, do you have any challenges keeping sort of key members of your team, key members of staff? Uh, no, um, I was just thinking, I mean, we're having challenges to get new people, no doubt about this. I mean, especially when it comes about solar, um, it's tough. I mean, it's not the way that we don't want to build uh, new teams. Sometimes it's not as fast as we hope. Mm -hmm. So from GBT core business, but we talk about retail, health care, um, we have a really, really dedicated team. They're working with us a long time, and even the new people like the new sales director, uh, we have no problem uh, to, 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 to keep them uh, because, yeah, as I said, we are growing and many of our competitors or many people around us are really suffering products. So we are really a stable, stable company for them. But I think we have a good mood. Everything is fine. Uh, the key thing right now, the biggest challenge when it comes about manpower or stuff is definitely to build up the solar energy teams. Um, this is right now, when it comes about uh, manpower, the biggest challenge we are facing. Uh, in our internal team at GBT, uh, it's better than, than ever. Mm. Um, and I guess a last question here, just in general, like as, as investors watching the business right now, what, what do you think are the things that we should focus on the most or maybe what what metrics or maybe catalyst should we be paying the most attention to i think i think the most important thing is uh, you you everybody's following your news so you have I, I think right now these days it's pretty easy to see uh the tendency of the future it's pretty easy to see which markets are growing and it's definitely the energy market there's there's no doubt about this energy is one of the drivers um, environmentally friendly, pollution free, not just with the green parties in Germany, we see this here in Europe, but we see this worldwide, that uh, environmentally friendly, global warming are the top trends. And even, even if the war for a short time, maybe put this a little bit aside, uh, I think for the future, uh, these, these, the, the world is uh, with the global warming and with, the, with this, all this um, discussions around this, um, I think this is definitely the industry which is which is taking care of this is definitely uh, something you should, which is naturally a focus right now. Mm -hmm. And I think many other things are, are self-explaining, like I said, like with the health care. So I think at the end of the day, every investor can take the decision by his own, just reading the newspapers, informing themselves. And when you then look where you expect the world in 10, 15 years, then it's pretty clear which industries, um, yeah, will survive and will grow in which industries having problems. Mm, perfect. Um, Dr. Sens, is there any key thing that you want to make sure everybody um, sort of walks away with today? Um, any key message you want to you want to state? I mean, the key message is, of course, I think that our um, our our development, our our projects for the future are not copied by, uh, by our stock price. So I just can say, uh, uh, that I hope that the people see our value and that they see where we are heading. Uh, they see that we are not a one-hit wonder. Uh, we are always flexible and ready to take the challenges of the future. We are an innovative company. We are a fast company. We are speedboat, not a big tanker. And we are going to do this. And then I'm, I'm definitely sure that the next year from now, uh, put on top of our base business, we will have some new great ideas. And we're having some ideas already in our mind, which I'm not allowed to tell here, but believe me, we are not out of ideas. So uh, we have a lot of ideas for the futures. We have a lot of ideas for reacting uh, on future challenges. And then I hope that the investors will follow our, our way. Fantastic. Well, we've been speaking with uh, Dr. Tilo Sens um, of GBLT Corp, uh, symbol GBLT. Um, Dr. Sens, I want to thank you for joining us today and I really appreciate the update. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you very much, Paul. All the best. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.